Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we're going to talk about the most powerful surface warfare division that was ever formed and why it lasted less than an hour. I get all sorts of questions about this picture, which is also from a, uh, a, a, a series of uh, footage that was shot on 7 June 1954. This was the only time in all of their long history that all four completed Iowa-class battleships operated together. So questions I get about this tend to be, why did it happen? Why didn't it happen more often? Why was this the only time in history that it happened? What was going on in this picture that they were all together? Uh, and, and other things to that extent. So uh, I'll give you a little bit of history on that and then why it never happened again. So first off, my claim that this is the most powerful surface warfare division in history. Um, a division is typically about four ships. Sometimes battleship divisions are smaller because there's so few of them. Uh, sometimes divisions are a little bit longer, but it's typically four ships that operate together as part of a larger unit. Uh, and they tend to all be sister ships or else relatively similar so that they all have the same maintenance issues and the same specifications so that they can operate together pretty well. Now the Iowas, with their 16-inch guns, their 33-knot speed, and their heavy armor, easily constitute the most powerful division of this. No other country made four last-generation battleships like them to create a division as powerful. And certainly by the 1950s, none were around. And this is part of why this only happens once. You don't need the most powerful surface warfare division in the world if nobody else can compete with it. So it makes more sense to split those ships up and use them wherever you need them. Also, about a decade earlier, the U.S. experienced this thing called Pearl Harbor, where if you keep all of your most powerful battleships in one place, they can all be knocked out at one time. Uh, and so since then, the United States has kept its assets divided um, primarily between the Atlantic and the Pacific, although in a number of fleets spread out in those uh, operational regions. And because of this, the Iowa-class battleships rarely operate together. So during World War II, New Jersey and Iowa enter the fight at roughly the same time. And it's about a year before Wisconsin and finally Missouri make it to the fight. By then, Iowa and uh, New Jersey have been a little bit worn out. And so all four ships are never part of the same fleet. Uh, whenever a new one is completed, one of the older one is, is sent back to the US for repairs. And then when that one comes back, you send another one. And so throughout all of World War II and the post-war years, uh, these ships never all operate together. In the 1950s, they're all home ported in Norfolk, Virginia. The Navy decides that all of its battleships will be home ported in one place. Uh, even though they're all being sent to the Korean Peninsula. And it makes absolutely no sense to put them in uh, Norfolk instead of Long Beach. I'm sure it made sense to some bean counter at the time. But one of these ships was always operating in the uh, Pacific off the Korean Peninsula, usually as the Seventh Fleet flagship. One of them was always in transit, and so you never had really more than two or maybe on rare occasions three in Norfolk at any one time. A year after this uh, picture is taken in 1954, Missouri is decommissioned and she ends up in mothballs in Bremerton. Uh, so even when the other Iowas are all decommissioned and put in the Philadelphia Navy Yard, uh, there's never more than three of them in one place. And when they're reactivated in the 80s, Two are intentionally kept in the Pacific and two intentionally in the Atlantic. Uh, and so this is the one moment in history when they're all together. And they knew it at the time. There was a rear admiral at the time named George Cooper who realized that Wisconsin was about to get back from being the Seventh Fleet flagship that none of the Iowas were being sent to replace her, that one of the cruisers was going to take over that role, that Missouri was going to be decommissioned in under a year, it had already been announced, uh, and that Iowa and New Jersey were in Norfolk 
at the time. So he realizes that this is the only time so far that these four ships are going to be put together. And if Mazor is about to be decommissioned, the rest will be soon. And at this point, nobody had any way of knowing that they would ever be reactivated again. Uh, and even when they were, they never operated together. He goes to another rear admiral named Ruthven Libby, uh, is in command of battleships and cruisers Atlantic Fleet. Uh, and he is about to take New Jersey and Missouri on a midshipman summer cruise of Europe. Uh, so Admiral Cooper comes to Admiral Libby and says, hey, we've got this one chance, this one chance to put all four of these ships together in one place. And uh, Libby is originally not interested, doesn't understand why, doesn't really care. But fortunately, his chief of staff, Captain Melson, former commanding officer of New Jersey, is able to convince him that it's a good idea. So on June 7th, with Wisconsin coming back to port and New Jersey and Missouri already loaded with midshipmen and about to head to Europe, Admiral Libby puts together what is known as Battleship Division 2. And this force operates together for a brief time off the Virginia Capes, and then the two groups of Iowas go in their separate directions, never to meet again. The footage that you're seeing throughout this whole thing uh, is of the ships doing pretty basic maneuvers. They're imminently more complicated when you've got a series of ships as large as the Iowa-class battleships. Uh, so in maneuvers like this, you would tend to have your ships operate uh, about a half a mile apart, and they may be operating a little bit closer, although you can definitely see that there's some pretty vast difference, uh, several ship lengths in between the various ships. And they're basically transitioning from a line ahead to all going in the same direction to line ahead again. Admiral Libby's flagship, New Jersey, is at the head of the line, and thus the furthest out of frame. She is followed by Missouri, the other ship in Libby's original squadron, uh, and then Wisconsin, with Iowa bringing up the rear and therefore being the one uh, most in frame in this picture. So at the end of the day, I understand why the Iowas were never all put together in one place before or after this moment, but I'm glad they got their one shot together. I'm honestly a little disappointed that there was so little footage taken of this event. So we've seen these pictures so many places throughout our lives that if, if there was something else, something in color, something, uh, one, one more picture that's a little bit different, that would have been great. So, uh, my closing question for you guys, if dogs travel in packs and birds travel in flocks and wombats travel in mobs, what would you call a group of Iowa-class battleships in one place? My vote is for a hurtin' of battleships, but let us know in the comment section down below. And don't be boring. Yes, they're called a division, but also a group of destroyers or a group of cruisers is called a division. A mixed group is a fleet. Like, give me something good. A pain of battleships? Ooh, a murder of battleships. We'll go old school crow on this. Hey, let me know in the comment section down below what you think a group of Iowa-class battleships traveling together is called. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. If you'd like to continue supporting us, there's a link in the description below that allows you to donate. There's also liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.